Hello, everybody. We are live. <laughs> I am looking at my TV right now and about to open up the video for us to watch. Now, if you've already been watching it, then that is amazing. I'm glad you're already watching it. If not, then please come on and start watching it with us. Periodically, I will be getting up to um, do some things. I literally just got in from visiting my mother-in-law in, -law in um, Raleigh. If you can hear me, can you please comment saying something so I can know you hear me? If you can't hear me, tell me that too. If someone can comment to let me know that they can hear me. Hi, Kimberly, can you hear me? Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Angel. Can someone let me know if they can hear me? Okay, great. Thank you, Angel. So if you have the, the um, Speak Up series or the first episode up right now and you are watching it live with me, um, thank you very much. If you have already watched it, then you can go ahead and start typing in your comments or any questions um, that you have, and I will answer them right here. I see that Nicolian is on the line. Nicolian is actually one of the speakers that was speaking for our first episode, so I'm happy to have Ms. Nicolian online to be here while we're watching this together. If you are wondering what's going on, go to my wall. You will see a link to a YouTube video. It's our first episode of the Speak Up and Inspire series. You can go to our wall and you can click on the link and watch it with me. Um, the purpose of this live um, video right now is to answer any of your questions, to take your comments, to take your feedback. Um, just be respectful of our survivors because it takes a a lot of courage and a lot of inspiration for them to share their stories with you live or with me live for the series. And they, it took a lot of, um, how can I say? It didn't take a lot of coaching, no, because this was, this was live and uncut. Um, all the questions that I asked were um, on the spot. It was not scripted. So our first speakers for our first episode walked into this with no idea of how it was going to go. We only had maybe one or two meetings before we actually taped it. So I hope that you are watching it right now. If you have not, if you are watching it right now with me, then please let me know. If you have already watched it, you can start sending me your comments, your feedback, and any questions right here on the thread. I'm going to step away for a second to grab something to drink, and I will be right back. Again, if you are not watching it right now and you have not seen it yet, please log into your YouTube, go to my wall, you will see the link, and you can start watching it with me now. If you already have, then you can start sending me your comments and your feedback. I'll be right back. Thank you.
Okay, so right now you are seeing um, Haley. Um, I want to thank Haley for um, allowing us to use her studio. It's a very beautiful studio. So if you are ever in the Plaza Midwood area, please stop into Halo Studio Lounge to check out the tattoo lounge there. It's not just a tattoo lounge, it's also a boutique. Um, it's all women owned. Um, it's a very unique tattoo venue. Um, so it is a lounge. You can go there, you can relax, there's couches, there's chairs. Um, it's a very beautiful, inspirational, positive venue. So if you are ever in the Plaza Nova area, please go and check it out. So I don't, I'm on my um, laptop. I know from my phone, I can add um, ones to the screen to actually talk to them. I don't see how to do it on my laptop. So I was going to invite um, Ms. Nicolian to the video so that you can also see her, but I don't see how to do it on my laptop. So if anyone can tell me how to do it on here, to actually add her, then let me know so that I can add her. Um, if not, she is on the thread. If you have any questions for her, you can just type questions um, on the board and just address her. Um, start off as saying Nicolian, and then that way she will see that you are talking to her. Otherwise, not any other questions that I see or comments or feedback, then I will um, answer them. I see that we have several people on the line. Hello, Qantas, how are you? Hi, Chantel, hi, Jonathan, hi, Eve, hi, Nicolian. Hello, Jennifer. So again, if you are just joining, on my wall, I have posted a YouTube link. And the YouTube link is for our first episode of the Speak Up and Inspire series. So if you have not already watched it, please join me now in watching it live. Uh, 
and we welcome our matches with them, which is what we have to do with the so I see a question from Jonathan, and Jonathan asks, will other women be a part of the series in the next one or just the main one? So our intention is that for every series, we are going to have different survivors coming on to share their stories. So Nicolian and Miss Tanil were the speaker survivors for um, excuse me, were the speaker survivors for the first series, and I'm so proud and happy that they were willing to do that. Um, the next series, we already have speakers lined up, so each series there's going to be different survivors sharing their stories. So, thank you for your question, Jonathan. So I'm going to continue to watch it. I will be looking for your comments. Thank you, Winifred, um, for your message. Yes, I really appreciate you supporting us. Um, you can watch the video later on YouTube when you get a chance since you're in a public place and you can't hear. So definitely watch it later. You can always come back to this thread and you can post your comments here or you can post them in the Speak Up and Inspire Facebook group. So while we're talking about that, I will post the link now in the comments. So this is the group or the page for the Speak Up and Inspire series. You can go to this link and you can leave any questions or any comments here. Um, you can also send me a private message about the series that you want to share. Um, if you want to sponsor or vendor at our next event, which will be on August 4th, that will be our next taping of the Speak Up and Inspire series. If you want to be a vendor, which means that you will, you can send us items that will go in the gift bags to go to the survivors and the guests. Um, you can also, <laughs> hi Terrence, um, you can also be a sponsor. So if you are interested in helping us with our cause to share survivor stories, then you can be a sponsor as well. If you're interested in being a vendor or sponsor, then please send me a message through our Speak Up and Inspire Facebook page, and I will return your message to let you know how you can get involved. If you would like to be a sponsor, we, I'm sorry, if you would like to be a speaker, we are already working on November speakers because August is full as of right now. Um, if you would like to share your story, we are now currently working on our November um, episode, which will be the third live taping of the Speak Up and Inspire series. Hello, Terrence. Um, you can say whatever it is you want to say. I'm listening. <laughs> or I'm watching, should I say. Um, Terrence is a longtime friend of mine. I have known him since I was 14, 15 years old, I think. So um, thank you for joining and watching. So right now on the screen, if you are watching it live with me, then right now, Nicolian, who is one of our survivors is, um, starting to share her story. Jonathan, um, will they be at the same venue? So our first episode was at Halo Studio Lounge. Our next episode is gonna be taped at um, Elegant Connections in Concord. So no, they will not all be at the same venue. If anyone knows of any venues that would be perfect for taping our live series, let me know. I see that my husband is online and he is listening now. And yes, Nicolian has an organization, the MAD organization. And she can tell you more about that. I will 
um, interview her within the next couple of days live to tell about her experience taping the Speak Up and Inspire series and the MAD organization. Yes, Terrence, um, Cedric is definitely um, been very supportive of me. Um, also, uh, Tanil's husband was there. If you watch the video already, then you will see that Tanil's husband was there as well, supporting her, and he's been supporting her ever since um, they were in college. But yes, it's very important to have men that are supportive of the fight or the cause to end domestic violence and sexual assault. I think that the presence of men is very important. We are actually gonna be doing a game night, July 17th at the domestic violence shelter. And we are inviting um, a couple of men to come to the shelter with us because I think it's important for the victims there to know that not all men are bad and not all men are abusive and that there are good men out there. So yes, it's very important to have men um, as supporters, especially if they are your significant other. It's very important that men understand the after effects of sexual assault and domestic violence and understand it and know how to help us when we need help. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Je Jennifer. I really appreciate that. Um, Jennifer is a friend of mine. We've been friends for 20 years, I think. And um, she has a story to tell too. I'll be happy when she's ready to share and hopefully she'll share it with me on the Speak Up and Inspire series. But thank you, Jennifer, for your support. Yes, Cedric. Um, Tanil's husband was there and he was um, there after Tanil was victimized. And of course he wanted to uh, <laughs> do the natural thing that men want to do when they are, when they care about their women. Um, but he was there from the very beginning and now he's her husband, still loving and supporting her despite her being a survivor of sexual assault. So thank you for bringing that point out, Cedric. Yeah. Nicolian's story is very dynamic. Um, if you are watching live with me right now, um, she's very transparent. She has a, a very emotional story to tell. And I plan to have her back on the second episode to support me um, as I continue filming this and directing the series. Um, and hopefully she'll be willing to share some more of her story with us. Aw, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. Well, maybe you can write a poem for my next book I'm gonna put out. How about that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Um, I, oh, but, um, mm. he had the best to drive around. And um, before I got in the park, the parking lot, I was working just jumping out the car, standing up my leg. And my neighbor was out stretching because the apartment that we lived in at the time it had a pool and it looked like a little playground. So my neighbor would stretch every morning. He was out stretching and I just ran him over. It fell right in his the way it was. The back door it was right there beside the kitchen. So I just fell into his house in the kitchen area. 
and that's when he went and got my neighbor, I mean my roommate, and um, and I told him what happened, I said, I just want to go home. And um, that's when my roommate decided, no, she called the police. As soon as I said his name, um, the police and that house around me, because it's going to happen out here later, he called the no, Terrence just answered, asked me a question. He said, what kind of speakers are you seeking? Um, we are looking for anyone that is a survivor of domestic violence, sexual assault, or a violent crime. So um, maybe robbery, assault, um, preferably someone who has lost a family member or loved one to violence. Um, and that's will tie in to Napoleon's organization, which we will talk about later. Um, but we are looking for survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and violent deaths. Um, violent deaths, so mothers, fathers, sisters that have lost a loved one who has died from a violent crime. Um, that's who we are looking for. We are also looking for speakers who support the cause. Um, meaning that they are advocates or they are, excuse me, or they are an organization that works with survivors. Um, also, our sponsors, if we have sponsors that are investing in the series, then we invite them to come on to the series to talk about why they are supporting our series. So those are the kind of speakers that we are looking for. Um, Jonathan, I think if you, and you were there for the live taping and thank you for being there to support, um, you see that all of us got emotional. So yes, I think that there, even though we can claim ourselves to be survivors now, yes, during the, the talking and the communicating and sharing, there is a part of us that still feels the trauma. But I think I can speak for myself and Nicole and Antonio that our therapy is in sharing. Yes, Jennifer, I understand. I definitely understand that, sweetheart. I love you. I will continue watching for any comments or questions. So again, if you are just joining the live feed, there is a link on my page to our Speak Up and Inspire pilot series, our first series in the Speak Up and Inspire series. So if you wanna to go to the link, it's on YouTube. You can watch it at any time. Right now we are listening and watching it together. And um, I'm taking any of your comments or feedback or comments. If you just join us, you can go to the wall to the link and you can see exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> My husband's cooking dinner and it smells really good. <laughs> Um, when I met Ms. Holland, we met um, and I immediately felt her spirit and I immediately um, could feel that she was a powerful, strong woman. One of the first stories that she told me about um, was about your son. So can you please tell us about that experience with um, my son. Okay, before I bring that, I can also say one thing. Another reason it is important to get healing is because you have, when you have children, they are affected. <laughs> and just like I stated, um, 
I was also after the the rape. I was in a domestic violence uh, relationship, but for the longest, I didn't think it was the, you know I was a domestic violence victim because I felt like oh I fought back, you know oh I'm not just gonna let someone hit me, but the fact that I had to fight is you know shows that um, I'm a victim of it and never looked at it that way. So therefore my Son, my daughters had to see um, violence. You know, I can also say from this and be very transparent to also say I was on both sides of the fence. I was an abuser as well as a victim. Um, and when my son got into a, um, a relationship where it was abuse both ways. Um, at the time we met, it was more severe because my son ended up, um, actually he was dead for six days because he was on complete life support, uh, no brain activity at all. And that's what started me to get into and start the, the foundation of mad. And at the time, it was mothers against domestic violence. And I said, no, I don't want this just for mothers. I think I want to turn it into a movement for domestic violence. Um, and, and my thing was not just for the victims, but who helps the abuser? If everyone is just reaching out to the victim, the abuser goes on to abuse someone else. So my thing, I wanted to not just help the victims, but I really wanted to get a hold of them. So that's what I came about. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I mean, sorry, if you have a smart TV, you can go on your TV and also watch it as well. And that's what I'm doing. Yes, Tenille was so strong and so brave. Um, I love her as well. As, as you might be able to tell, she is expecting her first baby. So um, we're excited for her. We're going to have a new Butterfly Visions Project baby, our first baby, <laughs> to arrive in the village. Oh, no, wait, that's not true. Miss Ann, Miss Ann just had a baby. Wow. Miles, little Miles. So we have, we do have our, a baby already in the village. So Miss Tennille's baby will be our second baby for it, to welcome to the village. Yes, yes, Irish, please go to the link and watch it and come back here and join us or post your comments or any feedback here. Excuse me, I'm just inviting someone to ask to join so they can find it. There you go. I just invited you. Hi, Kendra. Thank you for joining us. We are talking about the first episode of the Speak Up and Inspire series. It's a series that I'm directing um, that shares survivor stories about domestic violence and sexual assault. If you go to my wall, you will see the link. So join us. And everybody has some problems bad or the bad feelings in the air, nothing like that. We were just all having a great time hanging out, um, doing what teenagers do. And it got pretty late into the night, um, probably like around 12.31 a.m. Um, by the time we realized how late it was. And at that point, we all, you know, just decided maybe we shouldn't go back to our dorm that night. And um, two of the guys said, well, we'll sleep on the couch. You guys can just stay in our bedroom. Um, so my friends and I agreed to do that, and we felt safe, and we didn't see anything wrong with it. Um, later throughout that night, a different guy on that basketball team who stayed in the apartment um, literally woke me up in the middle of the night and came and drove me out of bed. Um, drove me to his room. And by the time I kind of woke up to realize what was happening, I tried, you know, pulling away. But he grabbed my wrist so tight I couldn't break free. And he took me in his room and laid me on his bed and held me down so tough and so hard that I couldn't break free. Um, at first, I thought about screaming and yelling to wake everybody up. Um, but then at the same time, he was so forceful, this fear came over me that if I got other people involved and got those other girls away to the point that they knew what was happening, what would you do to them? So I just kind of stayed there and, and kept telling him no and trying to push him off of me and he wouldn't stop. So I just allowed him to do what he needed to do. Um, and then immediately got up and left and just went back to my room. Um, to this day, my husband, who was a friend of mine on campus at the time, is the only person I've ever told this story to um, openly. I've shared it with a few clients and others that I've um, encountered at work that I've never even told my family about. Um, my husband, of course, was tremendously angry and wanted to go and handle it in whatever way he saw fit and um, encouraged me to tell people, but it just wasn't something I wanted to share. And the reason for that is just what um, you said earlier. So many times people are 
victimized, but then they're re victimized because people blame them for it. And all that kept going through my head was I put myself in that situation. I chose to stay there. Um, and that's all I saw coming out of it. If I told someone, no, those were going to be the questions that were asked. Why, why were you there in the first place? You know, it was late at night. Why would you put yourself in that situation? Um, and then also being a prominent athlete on campus, was anybody really going to care? Because that was something that was going to impact more than this community if I got so if you are watching, um, Tanil said something very important just now that she was one of the reasons why she didn't tell anybody and she didn't speak up about it um, for years to her family or anybody else is because she was worried about the people um, that were supportive of the man who raped her, but also the fact that she had willingly gone to the young man's house along with some friends. Now, she knows now that that's not really um, a reason. Well, let me let me take that back. A lot of people do not disclose or do not report their rape because they're concerned about how they're going to be viewed, and that's something that women should not have to worry about. But it is a real issue for why people in domestic violence and sexual assault um, situations do not report that they've been victimized because they're concerned about how people are gonna treat them, how people are gonna look at them, and that they're gonna be blamed for being victimized by their, um, their abuser or their attacker. It's shameful that victims have to go through that. I went through that myself, but we were hoping that by sharing our stories in the Speak Up and Inspire series that we were encouraged and inspire people that have been, or victims that have been victimized or have been hurt and or are still in a situation that is not healthy for them and is abusive, that they will be encouraged by the stories that are shared in the Speak Up and Inspire series and will come forward and talk about what's going on with them and get help, report it to the police if that's something that they want to do, um, and not hold this kind of experience or traumatic experience in because holding it in can cause so much more damage. So we'll continue listening to Tanil. My old point of view, um, everybody's not quite ready to tell their story yet, but at least knowing that it's okay to do so and you are is important. So um, I do have a question. So you work at Dateline. So if there's someone who um, you do handle domestic violence and sexual assault in the case line. So if a person is a victim of domestic violence, what, from your experience, what should they do? If they are a victim of domestic violence, they're ready to get out, what are their next steps? Um, so I can tell you what I think they should do, but at the same time, it's different for everybody. Um, every situation is different and every person is different and I think it's important for people to know no matter what someone's going through, unless you're that person, you can't really tell them what's best for them. Um, so that first and foremost, but um, having a plan is really, really important. If you are thinking about leaving a, a dangerous relationship, um, statistics show that it becomes more dangerous when you finally take that step to, to leave. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the homicides that occur in abusive relationships happen when someone's trying or just recently left. Um, so it's important to have a plan, whether that's uh, coming into shelter or knowing a family or friend or supportive uh, person you can go and be with, um, having those important documents and, and things that you need to be able to move forward, um, your prescriptions and all of that kind of stuff. Um, oftentimes I see people come into shelter and they had to hurry up and leave because their physical safety was the, the main issue, but they forgot about the prescription medication or their child's you know, birth certificate or whatever it is, and then they're hindered. Um, from that point on until they can get those things worked out. Um, and oftentimes you can't go back and get it. So um, just really having a plan. And, and if you don't know what that plan looks like, 
you can call it a hotline, a safe alliance, and um, get help with safety planning. That's what we call it, where you can kind of figure out how you take those next steps. Um, I do encourage. Um, so, um, Tunil works for. Hi, Tyrone. Give me one second. Um, so, Safe Alliance um, is one of the partners with my organization, Butterfly Visions Project, and I am going to post the link to our page so that you can learn more about Butterfly Visions Project. So, I just posted the link to our Facebook page, and I'm also going to post the link to our organization website. So my organization, Butterfly Visions Project, um, is a collaborative effort among the community leaders and other advocates, such as Nicole and Tennille. Um, and we have a partnership with um, Safe Alliance, and they are the only domestic shelter provider in Mecklenburg County in Charlotte, North Carolina. So they are usually full, but they also have partnerships with hotels and so forth to house domestic violence victims. Um, so, Tennille working for Safe Alliance and participating in our series was um, was awesome, and I thank her for doing that. Um, Mr. Tyrone, I am Tiffany. I'm the director of the Speak Up and Inspire series, and Ms. Nicolian was a speaker on the series for our first episode. So, what you are watching right now is a live feed where we are watching the episode together. The link is on YouTube. My page is public, or the link is public, so you can go to my Facebook page and you can find the link. It should be the second post down of the Speak Up and Inspire series that we are watching live. So people are on the thread sharing their comments, their feedback, and questions. And Nicoleon was a speaker on the series. So go to my page and check it out. Or I can go ahead and put, uh oh, I can go ahead and put the link here, or at least try to, if you give me a second. But again, my, um, my page is public, so you can go to my page, click on the YouTube link, and that's what we are discussing right now. So thank you for supporting Nicolian by coming on the thread. I appreciate you. And now I'm not able to get to it since I'm live, but you can go to my page or you can go to Nicolian's page. The link has been posted on her page. So thank you, Tyrone, for joining us. That because I chose to have sex in a certain amount of time, I a rape victim, is what they said, wouldn't have had sex that soon. What they didn't know is I had uh, what you would consider as a companion who had told me her name is, is Miss Robin, who stated that not only she was losing her family because she could not even sleep with her husband, um, she was going through a divorce because she didn't even enjoy sex anymore. She literally was basically celibate after that. Um, she told me, even knowing the trauma, the trauma I was going through, if I did not have sex, then I will allow it to do the same thing to me. And she said, the only way, you know, and she was dying, like, don't let this happen to you, you know. She even went further on telling me she would allow her husband to sleep with other women because she couldn't do it. So I didn't want that to be my life. And when I chose to, when I chose to have, and of course, let me um, also say it was not the best experience at that time for me. But I chose to do it. And I'm just grateful that I'm, I'm just grateful that he was supportive in that that time. Um, I have 
a bond with my youngest daughter. I have a bond with all my children, but my youngest daughter, who is here, I have a bond with her because um, I was pregnant with her when I was going through that. You know? And she, she was a twin. And um, I think that's one of the reasons I was her twin. Um, and I, they said I was going to lose her too, but she's here. So I think um, she, she's a good thing. And she, um, she fought to me. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry that he. Um, was not prosecuted for what happened to you, and especially the reason yeah. is because you chose to be intimate again with mm -hmm. your partner. Yeah, that doesn't take away from the fact that you were raped, and that's not a reason to not prosecute. So I'm very sorry that happened to you. So now Nicole Ann is speaking about a um, person that was very supportive and influence, influential in her life and her recovery um, when it came to her experience. It was a sheriff that's here in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, I believe. Um, so now she's sharing about her experience and her support systems. Um, having a support system is very important when you are going through this and um, going through any traumatic event, not just domestic violence or sexual assault, but just period in your life. It's always good to have a good support system. They talk to you about that all the time. When you do go to um, domestic violence or sexual assault counseling support systems, um, when you go to a mental health counselor, the hospital, they always ask you who is there to support you. And thankfully, Nicolian had somebody that was there to support her during this time. And so she just shared that with us. Thank you to those who are continuing to watch. I really appreciate it. Hello, Shalisha. Thank you for joining us. If you go to uh, the link on my page, we are watching the first, first episode of the Speak Up and Inspire series. So if you want to catch up and watch it tonight, that would be great, Shalisha. And you can always come back to this thread and um, post your comments, feedback, or you can stay on, on, on here and watch it with me. Thank you. 
are back from our break for our pilot series of Speak Up and Inspire. Um, so we took a break to kind of fellowship and get our emotions back in check and everything. I think mm -hmm. everyone um, is feeling really great about our first series. I think so. I think it went really well. Um, I think what makes us unique is that there was no script. <laughs> we just talked. So we had to say what was in our hearts. And I think that's the best way to, to be transparent and to be honest. And I think that's um, something else that we are doing this for, so that people feel that they can be open, they can be transparent, they can tell their stories. Um, so we wanted to open up this time right now for the guests that have come to support us. Um, all these people here that came to support us are significant in our lives, and having them here was very important. And I wanted to take a moment to say that um, I'm Mary, and my husband is here. He has been so supportive of me on this journey. Um, very understanding, and I'm finding that whenever I do speaking engagement, <laughs> like I'm talking about my story, because I have so much trauma in my life and so many things that have happened to me, that sometimes he's hearing things for the first time. And so I was saying to him the other day, I said, I want to have like a list of trauma, my trauma list, that I can just start checking off and telling him. So sometimes he's hearing things for the first time, like he did yesterday um, when I was talking. But he faced it, and I can see the expressions on his face. So we are starting to come to the close of the first episode of the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, both my husband and I got a little emotional for a second watching it. Um, I think this is the first time that we watched it together um, since we filmed it. And I want to say thank you to Thomas um, Hemingway for um, filming this for us. I'm going to put his name in the thread. He does videography, and I highly recommend him. He was very professional very understanding, very compassionate. Um, I'm sure it was hard for him to sit there or stand there as the videographer, but also hear the stories. Um, but he did know what he was coming to do. So it wasn't too surprising, but I'm sure that hearing it while working um, was a little surprising for him as well. So thank you to TJ or Thomas Hemingway on Facebook for filming this for us. And he will be our videographer going forward. I'm going to put his name in the comments now if you are looking for a videographer. So if you continue to watch the series with us, um, we are talking to our guests and um, wrapping up and just talking about some different points. So if you have not watched it yet, you can go to my wall. You will see the link on my wall. You can watch it. Um, and feel free to come back to this thread and post your comments or feedback or any questions. Um, we will be airing live again, um, probably this week, and it's going to be in the afternoon after work hours so that we can um, reach some more people. But please feel free to share the video and share this um, live broadcast on your pages. I would really appreciate that. Please like our Speak Up and Inspire Facebook page, which I put in the links. Also, we have an Instagram, Speak Up and Inspire. Please like that as well. And also, when you go to the YouTube channel, please subscribe. The more subscribers we have, the more exposure we will have, which will help us reach more people. So right now, Tanil's husband is talking, and he is sharing um, how it was for him as a friend at the time of Tanil hearing about her assault. Um, you know, I, I can attest to this myself. I found out my friend uh, abused his girlfriend. I literally, I, and I'm not saying, not to not to advocate violence versus violence, but I went in my own friend, like, and I'm not saying it to, to 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 tell others to to actually go and to go back to another victim or go after the after the abuser and go and, and take action in that way. But we have to find some means to to corral this and make sure that 
think that about the police situation. Uh, do you think also um, the, the stories too, and even like where female cops the same way? Do you think they have to be kind of trained to kind of kind of step back too and say, I mean, they may feel the same the same intensity. Oh, that's that, you know, that sometimes they may think I got to think like a robot. Not that I don't care. But, you know, and I'm not big enough police. <laughs> like, but, like, you know, like, not, not that, you know, but you still need, you know, you still need to put an elf or something. That's yeah. yeah. And, and I also want to ask, too, uh, well, you know, when you guys were going to the police, um, was the, the way the police, you know, since they had to kind of be like robots with sometimes, was that, like, kind of stopping you from moving forward or... or and how do you kind of go around or, you know, I don't know how to act, what I want to ask. Oh, I don't know how to do it. The men were very nonchalant, I don't know, compassionate. They, they pretty much treated me like another number. Um, it was only when uh, Katrina Brown, now she's the deputy chief now, and and she came and she showed the compassion. She didn't look at it. And I'm going to be honest, she uh, is a Caucasian woman, okay? And she didn't look at my brain. She didn't look at, you know, anything else. She treated me like a human being. And that's when she the one helped me to keep pushing because if I had to deal with just the other officers and detectives, I wouldn't have. I was doped up with a lot of medication because I would be. And they would still hound me. Wake up! We need you to tell. You know, you don't do that to a victim who has been traumatized. Yeah, she she's amazing. And one thing I can honestly say, she is working. That she asked me to come and also help far as talk to different officers about showing the compassion and, and care and stop thinking that every victim is going to react the same way because that's not. Well, in my case, um, my father was a police officer the first <laughs> the first time. Um, I lost my virginity to my, um, my two guys in the neighborhood, and I didn't tell my parents until a year later. Um, I told my best friend, and she, I swore her to secrecy. <laughs> she kept my secret for a while until um, one night I was looking at a movie of a girl being assaulted. I was actually watching the movie with my parents, and I just lost it. And so I told them what happened to me. And my father left the house, went to the guy's house that, that raised me, and I never saw the movie. Never. So I don't know what my dad did. <laughs> but for, for me, he was my police officer, and he, whatever he did, he went and he talked to the, the boy's parents, and I never, ever saw him again. Never even heard him mention or nothing. Um, the second, the guy that was there, he didn't physically rape me, but he held me down and stood outside the door. Um, he was a neighbor of ours, so I never told my parents who he was because I felt that my dad was still living because they were friends and family. Um, so I never told my parents that about his involvement, but I did tell them about the other boy who actually was the one that raised me. Um, but the second time that I was um, that I was raped, I knew the guy, and we were all at the house, and I fell asleep, and he attacked me, and he raped me, and I did go to the police, he was uh, best. He was the brother of, of my best friend, so I was scared to go to the police because I didn't want to hurt her family. Um, but I went through it. I went through the rape kit. Um, I did what I was supposed to do. I told I told them what happened, and they did not prosecute him. They didn't prosecute him because we knew each other and we had dated briefly before, and. They basically made it seem like it, it was consensual and that I just got mad and that's not what happened. Um, so I I had the courage to go to the police, she had the courage to go to the police, and nothing happened to our, our rapist. So um, the the officers treated me kind of the same way. You know, well, they don't make for, yes, John Texas for, well, yes. Uh, 
So you mean to tell me that he just came in the room and then I was asleep and he attacked me and he was a big guy and yes, he did rape me. And I was very matter of fact, I didn't change my story. And that lady told me you didn't change your story. <laughs> they didn't even pay the prosecutor. So um, the, the officers definitely need to be trained in compassion. And you know, I understand what you're saying about the, the whole maybe they have to take their personal out of it. But when they do that, they're showing us a disservice as victims when they act like they don't care or something like that. So we need to be trained in empathy and okay. compassion and you know the questions to ask, giving us space mm -hmm. and giving us time to to be able to gather our thoughts and our words because that can be a very um, intimidating moment when they're asking you all of these questions and you're still your body is still in shock. Your mind is still in shock and here they are coming at you with a whole bunch of questions mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of times the questions are misleading. Yeah. So, so yeah. That was, yeah, that was okay. I think the police role is important. I think our police department is doing a good job overall trying to train and officers and put that into place. Um, but there's still room to grow. Um, but the other part that goes with that, police aren't the only ones making these decisions. Sometimes they're so um, right now we are and talking about I tell people every day. our experiences after the fact. So after the tra trauma occurred, Nicoleon and myself, we went to the police and in our situations and nothing was done about it. Um, Nicoleon's attacker was not charged. My attacker was not charged. And it was over um, very unrelevant, uh, uh, very irrelevant reasons. Um, and that's another reason why a lot of women and men that are raped or find themselves to be victims of domestic violence do not come forward because the police do not treat them well. They make them feel like they are wrong for coming forward and that they are um, maybe somewhere, some kind of way to blame for being a victim of rape or domestic violence. And that needs to change. Police officers need to be trained in compassion and empathy, as well as do their jobs um, without making victims feel as if they're being re-victimized, which happens. A lot of victims are re-victimized when they go to the police. And that can be even more traumatic and it will make a lot of victims withdraw their statements stop cooperating with the police, which the end result is their attacker or abuser um, goes free to go and hurt and rape and abuse someone else. And that needs to change. So right now on the screen, if you are watching with us, is um, my husband who's talking about his experience as being a support system, just like Neil's husband did. Um, I wanna thank everybody that watched tonight if you are planning to watch, please come back to this thread and post your comments and your feedback and your questions. And I will continue to follow this thread to um, answer any of those questions or address any of your comments. And I want to thank everybody that joined us. Um, hello, Keisha. Hello, beautiful. I hope you're feeling better. Hello, Kenny. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Rose. Thank you for joining us. Um, hello, Thomas, TJ. Thank you for coming on live with us. If you are just joining us, um, you we are already about an hour in, but we are talking about the first episode of the Speak Up and Inspire series that I'm directing. We watched it live together, several of us. Um, some have watched it before before I went live, and hopefully you will watch it 
afterwards so that you can see the whole episode of the first Speak Up and Inspire series. It's a documentary of survivors sharing their stories, and hopefully they will inspire others to speak up about domestic violence, sexual assault, and violent crimes that have happened in their families. You can go to my wall to see the link, and you can watch it later. So if you're watching it, um, thank you so much for joining us. And I will be hosting another live event this week. And I will send out invites to that so that you can do this again with me. If you were not able to catch this live event, we will do it again later on this week at a convenient time after work. And we will also do another one probably early morning so that we can do one this is our first one. We're going to do two more live events where we can watch the Speak Up and Inspire series first episode together. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Napoleon, for staying on live with us. I appreciate you. I hope that you're feeling better. And let's schedule the, a time for you to talk live with um, those that view today and in the future about your organization, Matt. Thank you everyone for joining us and have a great night.